Okay, what's up, everybody? It's a great day. This is Gavin. We're going to go ahead and read through some comments and questions here, kind of do a QA and a in this video, and also do a quick announcement here before I do that. Uh, I am going to be starting, I think it's a, like about two weeks out or so, I'm going to be able to start doing live streams. So I'm going to start testing with that and, you know, should be freaking pretty cool, man. I'm, I'm really excited about that. So let's go ahead and get started on some of these Q&As and see what's up. Okay, now I'm just going to read through these for the first time. Rent, all right, and respond. Would the real Satoshi uh, push code under a rug, force more miners under a court order, plague is print. Okay. Snowden calls you a fraud, you're a fraud. Okay, that's just a comment. Uh, it's funny because he owns both and he's now allowing to sue for the value of BTC that he owns. So basically, who owns all of his BTC at the current price? All of his B BSV at the current price. And I'll also sue you under the price he's not been able to scale the BSV yet, right right now okay um I'm gonna miss all this drama once Craig wins JPVSB regardless if Wright is really Satoshi multiple governments throughout the world would have already arrested him and imprisoned him all right why etc financial system and bankers uh it hits 130 today now this is a what, what what I call the spam. These are spammers. Spammy. Look at 17 replies. I'm not sure how they do that, but they spam the spam the chat somehow. Pretty pretty efficient. I mean, look at all look at all those spams. Okay, where are the pleadings? I'd like to read them. Uh okay. I will post the pleading. Yeah, good question. Where are the pleadings? Um Dude, let me actually post those pleadings for you right there. Uh, hold on. Yeah, you know what? It's not that easy to uh, post the pleadings there because they can't attach anything. So it's a PDF file. And right now, I don't know how to get it to you. So can't respond. All right, 21, baby. Boom. Again, there's a problem. After the SegWit changes were made, you can't have determined reliance when the event already occurred before you got into the business. Kind of nonsense there. Yeah, huh? You're wrong. Gavin, cool. Higher probability of getting a Dan Pena interview for his Bitcoin insight than a BTC core rep to accept, accept the Dr. Right challenge. You know, and that's my uh, challenge is that, is that, well, not mine, but Dr. Right has a challenge to do a, uh, an interview, I'm sorry, a, a debate with a BTC core, Bitcoin core person, uh, let them, you know, debate this case, a BTC core versus versus BSV, I guess, in the original Bitcoin protocol and the white paper and all these th subjects he wants to talk about. But like Chris Sean is saying here, Chris Hahn is saying it's probably unlikely. Again, I I don't think it's unlikely. You know, why why would it be unlikely? And my, I mean, I, I, I would disagree because, I mean, I see people proudly promoting Bitcoin core. I think it's great, dude. You know, they want to promote it. Fantastic. They should stand behind it. Let's talk about it and debate it with two experts. What's wrong with that? I don't see why they wouldn't want to do that. Uh, Craig just keeps, um, Craig just keeping the cult on the hook a little while longer. David Sparks. All right. He's got a cult video. Great video. Can you respond in a video about CSW going after companies like BlackRock, BTC Mining Companies, and Tether? Um, you know, apparently, so when you read through the pleadings on on the in the in the at, towards the bottom of the pleadings and like this the paragraphs 250 plus is where he starts listing these other companies. And BlackRock is named as a trust, AKA BlackRock. I don't know the exact name. So Tether apparently is also one of the companies named in there. Now, this is where things get nuts because, okay, as a litigant, you know, you want to try to try to keep things simple. Uh, and I get, I get it. This is not simple. This is what's called complex litigation. When you have like a hundred defendants potentially, is that, I mean, that's where uh, that's where I'm a little bit dis not disappointed, but I'm like, man, why can't we make this more simple and just keep it to one defendant if possible? I get it. There's like a thousand people or something companies, and so 
makes it really, really difficult because if all those companies are going to have to get lawyers, unless they come together with some sort of alliance, then you're going to have like a hundred lawyers in the freaking courtroom. That's where the court's like, dude, this is seriously complex litigation. And so, yeah, let's, let's see, man. Craig likes to keep things complex. They won't come forward. Their silence is everything. They block everyone from BSV. They won't bring up Craig Wright because they're afraid of people looking into them and they won't realize a BTC is a scam. Uh, none, none from BTC will come to debate. Uh, they would freak out and have to have a one-on-one -on debate with Craig. There's a copyright infringement. Yeah, so that was part of what I talked about yesterday. There's a copyright infringement uh, because of the passing off. So it's the copyright. I watched the video from yesterday that I explained that. Okay, that's a, that's, that's a long, long discussion. BDC needed to be fact-checked live in any debate. Yeah. Why, what's wrong with uh, debate with BTC? All I see is like, you know, all I get is like freaking people. What's well, okay. There's a prince. There's a legal principle. It, it's, it's a very strong long-term legal principle. And it's like, when you have a strong case and the facts are strong, argue the facts. When you also have supporting law on your side, argue the facts and the law. When you have neither the facts and the law on your side, then you want to you want to throw gaslight the other side and talk about things personal to them, name call them, gaslight them and throw irrelevant topics at them. That's all I'm seeing so far from the people on BTC side, which I I I I'm calling out right now. Like because we need to get down to some serious debate with experts. Okay, this is a major issue, dude. Like, like I get it. Price is high. Okay, that's a, that's a, if you want to argue about the price, that's fine, dude. Let's uh, that's a reasonable argument. The market likes BTC. Fine, let's bring that argument forward to a debate with Craig Wright. All right, let's do it because all I'm seeing is gaslighting oftentimes and uh, sad. Right, sad that people gaslight. Uh, BTC needs to be fact checked in any debate. How can I have? Uh, how can I get dark circles under my eyes to disappear? Dark circles under your eyes to just disappear is going to be the liver flush, dude. You know, you got those dark circles is a sign telling you that there's gallstones in your freaking gallbladder and your liver. If you read the book, uh, Amazing Liver and Gallbladder by Flush by Andres Mortz, you'll see that those are signs that your doctor's not telling you about. He's saying your, your body is giving you a clue, okay? Your body's giving you a little clue. It's saying, hey, uh, please service me. Service me, please. I got this under my eyes. It's a clue from your liver and your gallbladder. So go out and do the amazing liver and gallbladder. Do the gallbladder and liver flush. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a starting point, dude. That's like freaking the major, major health issue, health cleanse that I've ever done. What, 50, 60 times now, dude? I'm a freaking world leader on this, dude. So it's a uh, thank you. This is very important to me. The, uh, this is more important then all the other stuff. Yeah, um, Eddie, you know, this is very important, he says about this court case. It is, dude, you know, and, and understanding the compliance of the court, whether he's in contempt or not, this is a big freaking case, dude. It's a very huge case, monumental. Now, whether it gets thrown out, I mean, I'm seeing that uh, the, the, late, the BTC guys like Dr. Bitcoin and he's, oh, they're not even gonna talk about it because they think it's frivolous. Tufty the cat, uh, my friend David Pierce said the same thing. Hey, uh, I mean, one thing I am in agreement with from those guys is that it's a freaking complex case, dude. It's really complex. And when you get a complex case with potentially like 50, 100 defendants, even more, I mean, I, I mean I'm not even sure how many defendants there could potentially be in this case. And, and whether it's even pled properly on that, is problematic. Now, it doesn't mean that it's over because, you know, normally you get a chance to amend your case. You can amend your pleadings and fix the errors. Um, I am going to have a show later on today with Mitch uh, Berman. We're going to talk about this and his strategy on this as well. So let's see, you can't complain about or rely on things, uh, on a thing not changing when it's already changed. You stated. So he's DOA trying to assert a claim in a copyright infringement when he's not Satoshi. Yeah, I mean, wrong. See, yeah, this guy Deadbeat says uh, copyright infringement since he's based on actual work defined in the white paper. But the white paper defines a contract, and this is what uh, BDC Core doesn't like: is that the white paper is a 
predefined contract and we accept the contract. That's a really good point. It's a it's a contract saying, here's the the terms of this contract that you're going to be applying under. And if you want to uh, you want to use it, then you accept it. You start building on it, build businesses on it. And so in this case here, Dr. Wright is not alleged anything about the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto. It's not relevant. So it's going to be a hard pill to swallow for this lawyer. Oh, Nicholas Gross. This is a lawyer, I believe. And I'm happy to talk to you, uh, Mr. Gross. I believe he's in a, in the East Bay uh, here in, 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 I believe he's in the East Bay in San Francisco. So, uh, I mean, again, I, I, I'm totally open to a meeting with an attorney like this and, and hearing his point of view. Uh, because usually they have a, a usually, I mean, sometimes, uh, now sometimes, not always, but sometimes they'll have a, a solid foundation in a legal argument uh, that is good. And I want to hear hear his argument if if that's the case. Now, it's just mudslinging and name calling, gaslighting, like the, the typical stuff, then it's just not not relevant. I, I mean, I, I mean, we, we've got all that. We've got plenty of that. But if he, if he has a sound legal argument, I would be absolutely uh, totally open to hearing it because I don't know everything. All right. I don't know what I don't know. Here we go. This is my friend here. He'll debate anybody except in court. <laughs> and then we got uh, this other guy is always on here. It's now the butt coin as the wonderful time to buy the butt coin. And soon it'll, it'll be, I'll be a rich millionaire. <laughs> I'll debate uh, Craig Wright anytime, Satoshi Nakamoto says. Gavin didn't mention uh, 10x regarding goodwill. This is from Craig's claim passing off. Dr. Wright is the owner of Goodwill, which exists in the name Bitcoin. It designates the electronic cash system to find the white paper. Not sure, but I think when Dr. Wright mentioned intellectual property, he was probably referring to his patents. Crypto Rebel. Oh, this is the truth. Uh, this is truth on, on X. I thought Dr. Wright, I thought Craig's register, the BTC uh, Bitcoin copyright office. So the, the copyrights already, whoops, man, something just happened. All right, let me scroll down. So anyways, we're going to, we're going to probably cut the video short here in a moment. I just wanted to do some of these comments. I thought Craig registered. Yeah, he did have that registered in the, in the, but, but the court said he cannot allege that claim because they alleged he wasn't the copyright owner. So they somehow vacated that copyright uh, that copyright claim in that other court, uh, you know, inside the Copa case. So somehow they were able to rule on that. So he's not able to, to, to bring up that copyright that he has. People are addicted to Ponzi schemes, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, there's uh, there does seem to be an addiction to the Ponzi schemes. And it's surprising to me uh, as a, as a, as a part, well, I guess as a party who's been harmed myself from a Ponzi scheme, that's why I'm a little more sensitive to it. But I, I hope that I can at least provide some warning to people because, you know, well, I mean, I, I, I was, I was falling for it too. You know, like I said, it was, uh, it was, it was this thing called Luna. It was great, man. It was an awesome Terra Luna. It was actually a great company. A great, I thought it was a great project. I really believed in it. Uh, I thought it was a great little DeFi thing they had going on. You know, I guess I didn't realize it was a Ponzi scheme when you're wrapped up in it. Uh, and so, you know, when it when it got up to seventy dollars, I think on the price, I sold my Terra Luna over to what was called UST, the stable coin, and I had about forty thousand USD, UST, forty thousand plus UST in the stable coin and a little wallet over there. And then, you know, I got a call from my buddy on the road. That sucker was at it was at seventy cents. I said, oh, I was on the road. I couldn't do anything. Oh, it's going to go back up. Then it was at thirty cents, and then it was at basically at zero. You know, so it happened pretty fast. Happen pretty fast. And it, you know, Ponzi schemes tend to kind of go that way. So I, I'm more sensitive to the Ponzi scheme because I being a victim of one, you you tend to be like, dude, this is the last time I'm falling for this crap, man. Um so here we go. Copa being remember Sakoshi Okamoto during the right trial. In fact, Miller attributes his behavior. I read more. If you carefully read the claim that Dr. Wright refers to Satoshi is a separate entity, in fact, Dr. Wright is effectively doing is representing Satoshi. This essentially is no different than COPA being permitted to represent Satoshi during the Craig Wright trial. Yeah, it's a good point. He's not allowed to do so legally at this time. True, he's not. This would actually be a perfect for the Bitcoin because uh, the entire lawsuit will be constructed without bias that Craig is the author. It'll get laughed out of court. Uh, last year, Peter Willie BTC Core got 
how many people would have watched to the face of Dr. Wright on the segregated witness. Let's see how many BTC core gets, gets this time. So many, man, I really hope you can host a debate with Craig Wright and some core, core defenders. Yeah, me too, popcorn, dude, that's gonna be great. Uh, I, I would really be honored to do that. It would be a freaking blast, man. You know, I wanna get like Peter Todd or Adam Back or Greg Maxwell or uh, uh, Mao, Samson Mao. Uh, one of the other guys in core, would be awesome, dude. What's, 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 see, I, 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 it seems like what's, what's wrong with that? Why wouldn't they want to do that? I mean, it seems like it would be a home run for them because they can get this case thrown out and get rid of it and they can humiliate Dr. Wright, uh, if that's their, you know, and win the debate if they're caught, if they're right. Cause I'm not going to take sides, dude. I will literally be like, if I'm neutralizing the debate, we're like, all right, rules, one and the other, one and the other. We can go on and set rules out in advance. All right. So it was my comprehension that he should be able to come in common law because of the statutory law, harm law if they have a different. Yeah. You know uh, how their common law works in the UK is, is uh compute is not, is not familiar to me. Uh, you know, it's definitely the UK is, is not under, common law well i don't know we have common law here but I, I don't know i don't know about i don't know how to answer that whether or not they operate in common law in the uk much appreciated from saying star quite simple to find out who's being deceptive in this one whoever does not show up yeah pdc organ developers acted in a partnership to hijack bitcoin the misrepresentation of bitcoin incurred damages to anyone as an investor developed on the bitcoin platform sure uh sue them blind they won't see won't be able to see what uh what <laughs> invest after this Pierce is not, <clears throat> and has never been a lawyer for uh, Greg Maxwell. This is one of the guys from BTC Core. Gavin's claim is malicious and false, and further is BSV is a fraud about Gret Pierce being a lawyer for COPA. I mean, uh, you know, okay, I don't know. Uh, you know, I didn't claim he was a, uh, I just said some of the information someone provided was that it appeared that he was representing COPA. Uh, that's what it said on the website. Now, I, I could have mis misread that, and he's not, but I haven't heard from Mr. Pierce to say otherwise. I I, I, I don't know. I'm sure we'll do a show. Uh, I'll do a show with him in the future and that he can tell me whether or not he is representing COPA or not. Uh, and we'll find out at that time, but we're going to probably wait on doing a show until there's some sort of a ruling on the from the Court of Appeal on the uh, Craig Wright COPA case. Monty Python skit. Uh, I like to know everything on the history of Bitcoin and the difference between Bitcoin that runs the original white papers created by Craig Wright and BTC and became a meme, meme token. Yeah, the history of Bitcoin, dude, you know, one of the things that's cool is, is if you read this case, you've got like the first 18 pages really going through a nice, rich history about the facts. When the white paper was written, when it was published, when they first put up the, you know, started running the Bitcoin protocol. Not when Craig did. It's not about Craig doing it. It's just, these are just public events when these things happened publicly. And the, the case does a good job at that. All right. So let's uh, let's hit the ones, dude, everybody. Be sure to subscribe. I'll see if we can go through some of these other que uh, comments questions later on. Uh, we uh, we got some freaking massive stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the uh, stop the screen share, go back on camera. Yeah, hit the ones and subscribe, share the video. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I got to forget about uh, subscribers are going up and be sure to, you know, hit the likes, retweet, and I'll see you at the top. All right, that's it, done.